What does one matchstick have to do with risk and rise? Let's find out. Welcome to Risk and Rise, the podcast where we explore the journey of overcoming the fear of failure, embracing risk, and achieving success in entrepreneurship, creativity, and personal growth. I'm your host, Talana Simpson, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey with you. Together, we'll discover the strategies, insights, and shifts in our thinking and attitudes that are needed to turn setbacks into stepping stones and transform fear into fuel for success. So grab your coffee, get comfortable, and let's dive into today's episode of Risk and Rise. Hi, I'm Talana Simpson and I'm your host in Risk and Rise. I'm also known as the Matchstick Girl and I wanted to give you this bit of the backstory of how Risk and Rise has actually come about about, because it all started with a single matchstick. Believe it or not, it was 17 years ago that I started my matchstick project and I heard of a guy called Kyle McDonald who was busy in his trade He was trying to turn a red paperclip up into a house by by swapping it with a whole lot of people and going up and up in value until he got a house. It blew me away when I heard about him. I thought, this is fantastic, and I really wanted to try. I thought, um, let me see if I can turn something into something else by a series of trades. And the one thing I needed, I just started my coaching practice called Inner Coaching, I needed an office space to to see clients. And I was thinking if there could be, and there often is, other startups who actually need a venue in the because of the type of business they want to start. So if I can do this and um, journey, and I had a matchstick because I have a, a really enjoy candles, so I had a matchstick on my desk, and I thought if I can turn this matchstick into office space, I want the office space to to help startups get their businesses off the ground because we need more startups because they are going to create jobs and stimulate our economy and they do wonderful things. They also solve problems in this world. Um, So that was how I started hearing about Carl McDonald's story. He did eventually get to the house. It took him about a year. Not like me. I guess I took 17 years to, to turn this matchstick into office space but along the, the journey, I um, have had a few detours where I had some health challenges, which I had to prioritize to get well again. And I've had some family things that we thought would just take a couple of months for me to work on on this family thing. And it ended up taking three years. And um, we had COVID. We had, you know, the Magic Project for me has always been a, like I, I explained to people, during the day, I help people become more courageous. And by night, I'm turning a matchstick into office space. So it was my passion project on the side. So I'm all right with it taking so long. It's going to um, over, and I should say through risk and rise, we are going to be unpacking the story and some of the learnings I've had that I can offer you from sticking to a project for so long, but also the very specific little elements that I've learned along the way. So let me tell you what I did is is once I'd got the idea and I decided on the end goal of office space for startup entrepreneurs and I decided to start with a match, I created my first blog. Blogging was new in those days, believe it or not. <laughs> I put it out in the world and said, hello world, I am going to turn this matchstick into office space. Who will make me an offer for my matchstick? And I received a few offers and I looked at them and I chose to trade with Nikki Fillion. Um, for an ordinary green ballpoint pen. And the reason I chose her out of some of the other offers was because she was offering to make the exchange at an event so it would give me exposure. And that's what I needed at that time. I needed more and more people to know about what I wanted to do. So I traded with her. So if you go to one matchstick.co.za, you can see um, I've um, recapped the story in quite a bit of detail there. You'll find all the the videos I did with uh, most of the people that I've traded with. So just to give you an overview of the one matchstick journey, I took the matchstick, as I said, I put it up for trade, and I traded with Nikki for the ordinary green ballpoint pen. I then offered that for trade and got received a few offers, and I chose to trade with Megan 
for a little toy frog. And he, we nicknamed him Rod the Frog. And Rod the Frog ended up traveling all over the world with different people. Um, Rita traded two books, two business books with me for, for Rod the Frog. Um, I then took those books, put them up, and I ended up trading with Nick of First Sighting Wine. He gave me, he had originally offered a case of wine. And when I went there, he actually was very generous and gave me two cases of wine. And, and it's amazing wine. So, and I had wine up for, for trade. I was at a picnic and someone else had one of those bottles of, of wine. Not, not mine, but they, theirs, obviously. And someone else said, that's really nice wine. Where could I get some? And I'm like, well, Claire, I have two cases if you will barter with me for them. And she did. She made me an offer of a holiday at their holiday house in Michalisburg called Utopia. So I traded with her. I got two weekends at um, her holiday home. And interesting enough, two different people that don't even know each other, Gaynor and Gerald, both offered me cash for a weekend at this holiday home. And I wondered, what can we do with cash? So I accepted their offers for cash. It turned out to be 3,000 Rand. Um, and interesting in this whole concept of fair exchange, because every time I'm making a, a swap with someone, it's in a way there needs to be value for value. They need to see that there's some value they're getting for what I'm I'm offering. Otherwise, it the trade just doesn't doesn't work, and it's always perceived value. Um, so what was interesting when I tried to trade with cash, because it's no longer a perceived value, it's such a definite value in our society, what a, what a rand can get you, that I found it very difficult to trade. I had over 100 offers <laughs> for the 3,000 rand. I mean, if you just look at the, at the blog around it, the, it was just the range of offers from motorbike helmets to guitars to... Um, do I can't remember oh, wild horses so what I ended up is I was considering at the time this wild horse someone offered me a wild horse and I was at a dinner party and there was a person there was an expert in horses there and I was asking her what's involved in a wild horse if I were to barter with this person she put me off because there's so much involved in that but another person at that dinner party also Claire said to me, like, why, what are you going on about? So I explained the whole concept. She had a voucher for a hot air balloon flight that she didn't want to go on. And she was really happy to exchange it for, for 3,000 Rand. Because all the other offers had, were either at exactly 3,000 Rand or less. Can you believe people offered me something of less value for the 3,000 Rand? So I shook her hand. Within 30 seconds, it was a done deal. So I now traded the cash for a hot air balloon flight. I then actually um, fortunately got onto 702, got onto the radio and with Jenny Chris Williams in those days. And we took live offers for the hot air balloon flight. And then I went and researched all those offers and I ended up choosing to trade with DJ Al Yopal for a party of the century, is how he, he described it. Party for 150 people where he would come and be a DJ. That was awesome, and I ended up then trading that with um, Spring Leap. Spring Leap no longer exists, but they did a very interesting concept of creating designer T-shirts. So they ended up giving me 375 designer T-shirts that I traded with 216 people. I traded each of those T-shirts. For some people, they obviously bought more than or bartered more than one T-shirt. And through that process, we also designed the one matchstick T-shirt. We had a whole um, process. People sent in the applications. People voted. And this is actually, I'm wearing the one matchstick T-shirt. So, yeah. So, now I had um, the 375 T-shirts that I traded with people. And the, 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 the way that deal was structured, I managed to convert that into a private rock concert with Wunnabur. What an amazing band. Sito and the, the band are just awesome guys. And they were offering a private rock and they would come into your house, set up all their gear and rock around, um, rock the night away, I should say, give you a full-on uh, concert. 
So there was this wonderful trading that on. I eventually traded that with Rene and um, Nina for three boxes of tech that take you off the grid. The three boxes of, of tech included things like solar panels and um, bags to carry all the gear, all gizmos and gadgets to hold cameras and phones and laptops. It was, I think, a wonderful bag of gear. And then I had some live stuff happen. Um, that family thing that should have taken six months took three years. And I was always trying to to keep going to, to work out how to trade it. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to burn the matchstick I explained at both ends. Let me go and find the the landlord who will give me office space. Find out what he needs for that office space. Go and get what he needs and ask those people if they need the boxes of gear or what they need. And I would keep going until I'm, I worked backwards from the final goal to match where I was. And that's what I did. We, lockdown happened. Also with lockdown, our concept of working with um, office space just totally changed. We did so much more virtually. We were more open to working virtually. So I really had to think, like, do we really need offices still? And in what way? So the one matchstick idea also went through a, a pivot, you can almost say, there, where, where my end vision then became around um, this mix of virtual one matchstick office and actual one matchstick office. And at the same time, I had started to develop my skills and my capacity in the area of failing, specifically coaching people to overcome that fear of failing, whatever's holding them back, whether it's um, needing to speak up more um, in their relationships, the fear of being seen in terms of public speaking, the fear of failing in terms of what if the business doesn't work, what does it say about me and um, the backlash that might come from it. So that's I pivoted to, to, to that. And I went and decided to pitch to um, a lawn raise. He had, through this journey, I can't remember exactly when, offered me office off space, but it didn't meet what I, my vision at that time. So I actually declined him. So now that I've got a new vision, I went back to him and said, okay, this is what I want to do in the One Matchstick office. Would you be willing to offer me office space to help a startup entrepreneur get their business off the ground? And he said yes. So then it, he came back to me with a menu list of things that he needed in specifically in his training room that if I could barter to, to that, he would give me the office space. It turns out that I then did four trades or four items. So it's three trades actually. So on Elon's um, list of items was a podium. I found the perfect podium for him from Clear Design down in Cape Town. And I asked them what would they um, exchange with me in order to give me a bit the podium that I could give on to a loan so that he could give me the office space. And they needed sales training. So I went to the network, asked all the sales trainers I know, and Brian De Beer um, was the one that they chose as a fit for them. And in exchange for him doing some sales training for um, Clear Design, I am bartering with him by giving him um, some information or, or helping him to set up his own podcast. Um, and we'll be hearing from him later in, in Risk and Rise. And then so I then took one of the boxes of gear in exchange for, for giving consulting and training around how to start a podcast so that we could get the podium to a lawn raise. So that was the one thing. I did a very similar thing with Baynant of the blind guys. We needed blinds for the training room at Race Corp for a lawn. Um, and they agreed to do that. And in exchange, I'm actually coaching one of their franchisees. And I took another one of the boxes. So yes, in the, my final trade, I ended up getting very involved in, in offering my skills and time and energy in exchange for for the boxes and I really it wasn't intentional it's just how how this all unfolded the last thing that I needed um, in terms of the the menu list that Alona gave me was a tv and projector for this this training room and Andy of the Bob group came forward and he said he was very happy to to give me those items 
Keto Innovations was um, a company that I also looked at bartering with. They wanted a brick making machine in order to offer that. And we spent weeks with the brick making company, brick making machine company, I should say. And we just couldn't find a way of bartering with them at that time. It just didn't work. So I managed to, to still use Keto Innovations to install the TV. And um, they're a great team, a TV and projector. And the Bob Group then had, got involved by providing the, the TV and projector that Keto, Keto Innovation installed. And so I'm offering my services to the Bob Group in exchange for the last box of gear. So I'm the one who really liked the gear and ended up with all the gear. And in exchange, I'm now offering some services and consulting and coaching to the people that delivered to Elon of Racehawk. When we did our final trade, we found that um, I was just a little bit under the goal value. And I'll tell you now what I turned the, this matchstick into for um, Elon Race. So I offered him a quirky item to just seal the deal. And he agreed. I went recently, you're welcome to go and find the, the real of it. But I gave him an a guitar stand. The Race Corp um, energy and ethos is one of very creative, off the wall, funky, gets you thinking and having fun while you are um, starting and building your entrepreneurial endeavors. And so that fits in wonderfully there. He's very happy with his air guitar stand. Um, so, you, for the little side note, go find that reel if you want to to learn more about that. So yes, this year, January, we shook hands, we finalized the deal, and it is now done. No way. So, um, I managed to turn this single matchstick through a series of 13 steps and a number of trades along the way with so much wonderful learnings and so many awesome people that I've met through this journey that I'm hoping to introduce you to over this, this in this risk and rise where we can learn from them and from each other how to overcome the fear of failure and embrace risk and challenge and show up and contribute to this world. So I managed to turn this matchstick into the office space to the value of 70,000 Rand from a single matchstick, which is a couple of cents. <laughs> so you guys are the first to know the actual values. I haven't been sharing the values at all because I wanted to work on the perceived value. And this is what I'll unpack as we go along through Risk and Rise, where it's relevant to our journey of learning um, to risk and rise, right? So just to end on one more note, um, I wanted to this here in episode two is just to give you the background story of now we have the office space. Um, the one matchstick office is both a virtual office and an actual brick and mortar, like a, a venue here in Johannesburg. We are tomorrow, like Friday, the 1st of March, opening up for applications for people or entrepreneurs, startups in particular, who would like to have that access to the office space for six months in, in Johannesburg. So I'd like you to go to onematchstick.co.za where you will get the outline of how to apply because your first step is to send a video to me but um, through your social networks tagging me using the hashtag risk and rise and the hashtag one matchstick so that I can find you. So make sure you tag me, you use risk and hashtag risk and, and rise hashtag one matchstick. Um, that's going to be the first step of the application. From all those applicants in that video, you need to tell me what your business is about and why you need the office space and what you hope to achieve through having access for six months to fully, you know, fully serviced um, office space. From that, we are going to narrow it down to 10, um, yeah, the, to the top 10. We are going to then interview those top 10 through this, this podcast. I'm going to share more. And then you, the public, are going to vote and tell us, the judges, and the judges are Mongezi Mtati, 
Elon Rees and myself, Talana Simpson. You're going to tell us out of those 10 who you think the top five are. From those top five, they're going to come to the one matchstick office warming party. <laughs> it's going to happen in April. And there we are going to give them one last chance to pitch because it's a great skill to develop. And then we're going to choose who will be the one matchstick startup entrepreneur who has office space. And then the virtual part of the one matchstick office is this right? Virtually through you listening to me on through your favorite podcast app and um, while you're driving or walking or doing the dishes or whatever it is, however you consume a podcast or watching on, on the YouTube, the, the videos um, around this podcast, I am going to, to do my best to help you and um, you are going to also help me and everyone else to overcome this fear of failure and develop our risk fitness so that we can live more courageous lives and take more chances in starting businesses that can impact our economy and the lives of people by creating jobs. We're also going to be launching Bravery School specifically for startups later on this year. So that's going to be also a whole virtual um, training uh, journey that we're going to go on to develop our risk fitness and our courageousness in order to, to start up a business. So that's going to be all part of the, the virtual aspect of One Magic Office as well as starting on the 1st of March, you might be the startup entrepreneur who gets office space. So please go again and we just remind you to onematchstick.co.za where you will learn all about how to apply to be the One Matchstick Startup Entrepreneur. It's all going to be there. And also please share and um, get people to understand the backstory and the excitement around risk and rise. We are going to be going on quite a journey over the next few weeks and months. And the more you share and rate the show and leave reviews, on whatever your your favorite podcast app is, if you could please do that, it helps more people find this. And that is your way of helping me and of contributing to changing the way we see failure. So with that, I look forward to um, our next journey. Our next guest is, um, the next episode is with Donna Rachelson where we are going to be learning how to fail fast and fail forward from someone who epitomizes that statement. So join me and see you soon as we risk and rise together. Thank you for joining me on Risk and Rise, where we face fears, conquer challenges, and rise above adversity to achieve our dreams. Find out more at riskandrise.co.za.